guys welcome welcome to my new space you guys um so this is the results of my two plaster pieces the beige one you guys saw the other night i think and the white one is the one that we did a video on so i painted the one beige obviously and the white one i actually painted with chalk paint um this one took me a little bit of time you guys because i am a freak for straight lines and smooth edges so i have done a ton of sanding on this one a ton of sanding but it's quite pretty i think i'm pretty happy with it so my next one i think is going to be maybe terracotta or green but i want to show you that so this is my corner this corner over here the bottom that it just kind of all smudged and i really really like it yeah i like it a lot so there it is. There's the whole thing. So I'm going to put you on hold and I'm going to turn you around and show you my next crazy endeavor. Hang on, guys. All right. This is piece number three. So the difference with this one and the last two that I showed you is this one is all plaster of Paris. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing, you guys. I have sanded and coated and re-sanded and it's coming. It's coming, I think. I'll show you if I can get up close. Let me put you on hold and then we'll zoom. Okay, so now we're up a little bit closer. Um, this section here is pretty much done. It needs a final sand. This rest of it I've just coated again so you can see how that's pretty rough. Um, it's definitely quite deep. Um, many, many, many layers. So one of my viewers asked me the other day about what keeps the joint compound or the plaster of Paris on the canvas and the only answer honestly that I can say is I don't know but it's a comment like that that gets my head going in different directions so this piece is plaster of Paris this piece is rock hard absolutely rock hard so one thing I did do was I put about a 50-50 mix of white glue in with my water. So it's hard enough that I've done a lot of this sculpting bit with a Dremel. So there it is, guys. That's my newest endeavor. All right, I'm gonna put you on hold again, and then we're gonna paint. All right, we're back again, and we're going to do some, I don't know, swipey, transfery type things. My colors are all here. I just don't really know what I'm doing with them yet. So we're going to start with a puddle of white. So this is Beauty Tone right out of, oh, it's got some putty floating on the top of it. Beauty Tone Velvet right out of the can. I might actually just do white on white. I don't know, hard to say. All right, white puddle. Okay, hey, and here is my crazy mix of colors, you guys. So, we're going to do, what are we going to do first? Okay, this is a gorgeous, kind of a taupey brown color. Um, I'm not really sure what it was. It's, it's another one of my mix all your paints together, and I didn't like it, so I probably added some umber or something. Uh, I'm going to put a fair amount of paint down. Because again, we're just looking for a cool puddle to play with. So raw umber chocolate brown. That's what we'll call it. Raw umber chocolate brown. This is Atelier Rich Gold. I wasn't going to use base paint. I was really happy with my piece last night that I didn't use base. I used all my acrylic bloom paints as a base and the colors were just slammed in. Okay, this is a cheapy cheapy paint from the dollar store. This is the acrylic brand. Um, I've used quite a few of them. I have no issues with them whatsoever. They're obviously not as nice as golden pigments or piggy pigments or any of the other beautiful things, but you know what? It works just fine, you guys. This is my favorite piggy. This is brulee. Um, yeah, I'm kind of hooked on this color. I, I really, really like this. This color is just, it just, it's a killer color. Killer color. All right. This is 
This is golden phalo turquoise. And I don't think we need to use all the colors that I have mixed up. White cell mix. So I really want to modify. I did a piece last night and I know I posted the video and I said, oh, I didn't like piece one and I wasn't fond of piece two and I didn't post either one of those pieces. So you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, you just have to trust the fact that I didn't like them. That's black cell mix. All right, the blowout. Here we go, guys. Oh, now you'll be able to see my new blue-gray hair, maybe. All right, here we go. All right, let's just let that come to the surface and we will get something to paint on. Maybe a couple tools in case we need it. All right, we're gonna put that over here for now and just kind of let it do its thing. And we are going to paint on one of these. So this is fiberboard. You guys have seen me paint on this before. Um, these are dividers for products. My mom goes to some funky little shop and I don't know, they sell novelty items. And so when their packing comes from wherever it comes from, um, all their candles and little knickknacks and stuff are all divided in a box with these things. And this is fiberboard. I've painted on tons of these. It paints really easy. Um, the biggest thing that is an issue is that it will warp. And so it's really important to let it dry flat. And then I did a couple videos a while back that I went through the process on my mom making these little strips for frames. I don't have any in here, I don't think. Oh, maybe I do, hang on. All right, you've seen this. Um, so my mom makes these little wooden strips and this is just sitting here, so. Oh, I can't take it off. Um, they're grooved. She just runs a little groove through them and I just slide it right down the groove. And yeah, it keeps them nice and stable and they hang really well and they're super easy to work with. I cracked this one. This is why it's in here because I dropped it. All right, that's what we're gonna paint on. We're gonna use the Beauty Tone again, right out of the can. We're gonna give it a bit of a mix. This is my style of mixing. Not the most conventional, I know that. So yeah, it's pretty safe to say that I have fallen down the rabbit hole as far as plaster art. Um, I got so wound up with my last few pieces that I actually just bought a about a 30, I think it weighs 30 pounds or something, a great huge tub of drywall. So the drywall or joint compound is 10 times easier to work with than the plaster. Um, it's easier to sand. It's easier to smooth out. It's just all around easier. But I don't know if it's as, as durable. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's like everything. If you just put the art on your wall and don't bang it or bump it or move it or spray it or do stuff with it, it's fine. Um, but of course I have to challenge myself. So that was my challenge piece, you guys. So if I was gonna tell anybody anything, it's don't get over industrious, start small. I don't have a clue what I'm doing, not a clue. And so it's been kind of a labor intensive project. Fun one, but definitely labor intensive. All right, we're just gonna spread that around a wee tiny bit and we're going to torch it because tonight I actually think I know where my torch is or fun kind think I knew where my torch is this is a better here it is
All right, transfer swipes. So we're gonna take this beautiful, beautiful puddle and we're just gonna scoop it up. My dirty putty knife, I'm gonna wipe it on my pant leg. So I try to hold my palette knife or my putty knife, this is, um, as flat to the surface as I can and just sort of allowing the paint to run on at its own will. All right, my friends, here we go. So my plan is to try to leave some negative space because I want to modify. Same thing, scoop this section. Oh, that wasn't great. Okay, well, we're going to have to fix the boo-boo at the end. And I might just leave that like that. All right, let's give this. Let's spin it first and see what happens. I, I have to get rid of that sloppy bit right there. But I think maybe we will spin it first and then see what happens. Another big gobby, messy bit. All right, let's do it and see. Here we go. Okay, so this one took care of itself. That's good. This one did not. So we're gonna have to fix that because I don't like it. So I'm gonna scoop up some of this clean white here and we're just gonna drizzle this back on here. I could probably modify right through it, but I don't really want to. I just want it gone. Okay, that looks better. I think, I think. I got a corner over here that I missed. I probably still have some paint that I could move, but I'm just going to fill these in in case right now. All right. Well, I have lots to work with here, you guys, which is a bonus. I have to do a super quick clean up here on aisle five. If I can find my paper towel. You know, sometimes it doesn't pay for me to be organized because when I'm organized, I'm actually quite disorganized. My life runs so much better when it's complete chaos everywhere. Okay, we didn't waste a lot of paint tonight, so that makes me happy. Just a few, a few little swipey bits. Sorry guys, I know this is a god-awful noise. So I have to tell you my story today. It's been a day of excitement for me. I have had absolutely zip time. I've been complaining about this on people that are think they're here for painting are really my therapy. I've been complaining about this for weeks and weeks and days and months that I have absolutely no time 
anymore to do the things that I like to do or have to do, like work in my garden and blah, 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 because I'm on like continuous grandma duty. And today it was like, oh my God, no one's home. Baby had gone to daycare and my daughter had gone to work and it was like, oh, what do I do? Do I like paint or do I clean my room or work in the garden or have a bath and shave my legs with the little people sticking their head through the door or what do I do? So I decided that the garden kind of took priority because my granddaughter's birthday is tomorrow and it's a garden birthday. All right, you guys, I'm going to talk and work. Uh, my favorite little kebab sticks. So I'm probably going to explain this actually as I go because I do have some new people that have joined my channel and I just babble away to all of you guys assuming that everybody knows what I'm talking about until somebody puts me in check and says like, can you explain things? So we're just making some lines, you guys. Same as always. Little lines. We're going to wipe off as we go so that we do not put dirty paint into our clean white base. And we're just going to keep going like that. So garden. I'm going to work in the garden. And I've had a wasp's nest on the side of one of my gardens for about two weeks now. And it sits right next to my granddaughter's bedroom door. So I know the logical time to deal with wasps is at night, but it's hard to do when she's snoozing and blah, 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 blah. So this morning I decided that these wasps really have to go. And I, I tried to spray them a couple of weeks back and their location of their nest is kind of in a weird spot and so I decided that in order to really get in there I have to move a plant so this morning I went out with my can of bug spray wasp spray and I thought I'm just gonna put the shovel through it and get rid of these guys so I took a big scoop of the dirt and I opened it up and I wedged my shovel on a rock and all of a sudden like 300,000 bees came zooming out at me and I was trying to spray it while I was running because I'm not really brave and I don't like getting stung and I managed to spray it in the hole and I got two stings. One was on my foot, the little bugger was attached to my shoe and he only kind of half bit me but the other one was relatively close to the unmentionables in the back side of me. So right between the crease of my bum and the top of my leg, I have a bloody bejesus wasp sting. And it's not in a spot where you want to like be itching and scratching and have to like look like a total freak. I'm not very happy, you guys. All right, we're just going to keep making lines here, there, and everywhere. So this is really pretty with this soft, I like the blue, but this is lovely. This is very delicate. Um, I like it a lot. Okay, I'm going to go, go this way. So every little line changes composition. And just adds little embellishments and little spots of details in your pieces. You just don't be afraid of it. Just get in there and make some lines. It's like doodling on a piece of paper while you're watching mindless TV. That's all we're doing. Nothing super complicated. Consistency is like the number one thing. Um, if my paints aren't mixed right, then my lines and shapes will not hold, and then I'm not a happy camper. Don't like things when they're not crispy. So once you have your consistency down, then it's really up to you how far you want to take this. I haven't modified anything for a few days, so let's just go bonkers. Let's do it right to town, you guys. This is going to be pretty. This has got lots of contrast in it, this section, with that beautiful dark brown. Did you see what I did there? 
So I didn't wipe off as cleanly and so it's made a little kind of a stamen-y type thing. I do it intentionally sometimes. That was not intentional. But we'll just add to it over here and make it look intentional. So this one is intentional. And then we're going to add another one in here now because we need balance. All right. I went out to check my wasps this evening and it's pretty quiet. I don't really know if I got their whole house but there's definitely pieces of their house which I kind of schmucked with the shovel while I was running quickly away all right I've lost my my curly Q maker you guys hmm. all right we'll keep going and then I'll shut you down and find it This, this TLP brulee is like, I am so hooked on this color. It is absolutely stunning. In everything I put it in, it's so pretty. It's like an interference copper. Um, yeah, it's just like, oh my God, how did I live without interference copper in my work? My work, my fun. This is fun. It's not work, you guys. More little lines. So there is absolutely no particular rhyme or reason or why I put anything where I put it. I just kind of go in and start making lines and taking things apart and I don't see things beforehand. I just it just, I just do it. I don't always do it right, that's for sure. All right, we're just going to go back in. I'm not, I'm not 100% liking this but I don't know what to do with it so we're just going to go in and make some really little lines this time so now all I'm doing is just a really really gentle touch I'm dragging that white base over top of the acrylic colors if you push too hard it works but it, it, you don't need to you just want to drag these colors through just creating little lines that's all I even like these two little irregular spots and this funny tail. I like that too. Okay, I think I'm going to just pull some of these in. You don't have to space these evenly, you guys. Um, I'm not a matchy-matchy girl, but I definitely am. I definitely like balance. I don't. I don't like things uneven and not crispy and yeah it's kind of weird paint abstract and then I have to control what happens with it fancy schmancy all right I really need to find my kebab sticks So when I fell down the rabbit hole with plaster art, 
I mixed everything in my room up. So now I have plaster art supplies mixed with acrylic supplies and it's not really that easy to find anything anymore, even though I'm organized. All right, I don't have a kebab stick, but I have a little spoon with a round ball on it and it's gonna do exactly the same thing. Um, let's curly cue this one. And just tighten that, not really tighten it, but I got rid of that a little bit. I'm gonna give this a bit of a spin. I think I still have too much paint on it actually. So this is a good example if my paint is mixed correctly, everything can move and nothing will be lost. Like it will all just be the same way, which is a good, kind of a really good testament as to whether I have my paints mixed well, not mixed well, but functioning well. So I lost a little bit of stuff, but that's okay. So my mom is really sick. <laughs> So tomorrow's birthday is going to be interesting because it's my side of the family is very small. It's like my mom, my stepdad, and myself. And my ex-husband's side of the family is the stepkids and the nieces and nephews and everything. And all of their family is coming. And then mine. It's kind of going to be like a party with my ex-husband. Which is fine. We all get along. No, no hard feelings. Good guy, just not good for me. Ha ha. All right, what are we gonna do? So for some reason, my blue is not really holding up like it should, and it's breaking apart. But it's it's quite pretty. I don't normally like that, but it is quite pretty the way it's sort of fading out. So it will, well, that's better. All right, I gotta turn this around because I can't do this this direction. So um, if I could find my proper kebab stick, it would be much easier, but I can't. So we're just gonna put our spoon ball in the middle between the color and the white. And we're just turning it gently and picking it up as pulling it up as we come off of there. So this piece has a ton of pigments in it and they don't hold their shape right away. They need to set up for a little bit. So if you find you twist something and it doesn't hold its shape, just come back. Come back in in like 20 minutes, half an hour, and you can just give it another twist and it will be just fine. You can move it, you can shove it in if you want, you want to make it smaller in there, just give it a shove. Pretty, pretty, pretty stuff going on here, guys. Well, because we need these little wispies here, the little flower stamens, I'm gonna come in here. I really like these cells and I don't really wanna wreck that, but I kinda of have to balance that out, I think. So I'm gonna come in here and leaving the paint on. Wee bit better, balances that out. All right, you guys, this might be the end, the end of the end of this piece. It's quite pretty. I really want my other, my other skewer thing. I have like a 
dozen of them. Surely if I could find one. Right, don't mind me guys, I'm hunting around here for something. Something I can't find. All right, I'm gonna love you and leave you here. I'm gonna try to find my metal kebab sticks, the, the ones with the bigger ball, and I'm just gonna give these another twist. So I won't change things. I'll just kind of tighten stuff up. So if you see a still and it looks slightly different, that's why, because I've come back in and I've tightened it up a bit. But I'm going to put you on hold again. All right, here we are over top of it again. Uh, yeah, some really pretty fun things, guys. I'm going to bring it down. I realize that this is like so bright. You know, I'm such a ditz. Like I just, I cannot get this whole color thing going where it's too bright, it's too dark, it's too this, it's too that. This is my world. All right. So ignore the camera glare, or the light glare. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty sections. I'm going to see if I can get this camera there. That's better. That's probably a little bit darker. Little sections. So I'm just going to come back in right here and I'm just going to twist those a tiny bit. So there's our little flower stamens, guys. Just leave this, leave the dirty paint on your skewer and just be wary of what direction you want your stamens to go because as soon as you drop that stick in the white paint you're going to see dark paint all right and there's our fun little wispies so this is the corner section that i really really like i like all these soft details i don't like the glaring light but it is what it is all right my friends Thank you so much for hanging with me in the kitchen tonight, uh, coming down my rabbit hole and all my new endeavors. Uh, if anybody has any tips or tricks on working with plaster and how to get it nice and smooth, uh, feel free to shout at me. And I will talk to everybody really, really soon. Happy Friday, guys. Bye for now.